welcome to everyone who has joined us, whether you are here in person. These, this is almost the most people I've seen in a year inside this space. We've had one event that had more people, but only one. Um, so welcome, whether you are here in Zoom with us or whether you are here in the sanctuary with us. You are part of this community and you are welcome to be with us this morning, this sacred and blessed morning. And thank you to Alan immediately for the beautiful music. Alan works at two churches, so you can imagine his week is twice as busy as anybody else who's doing ministry in this whole valley. So we have to really give him a lot of love today and appreciation. <laughs> the, the people in Zoom are applauding you, Alan. Uh, <laughs> so I think that everybody inside Zoom should unmute and then we will all together with the people in the sanctuary. So please unmute if you can, so you can participate. And we'll all say Happy Easter to each other, and then we'll also say Alleluia, because we're allowed to say Alleluia today. So we're going to yes. practice. Yes. Happy, Happy Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. 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 And, and yeah, we'd love to hear an alleluia. So I'm going to give you a one, two, three, and then do it like you're at a Red Sox game or a Pats game <laughs> or whatever your favorite team is. All right, ready? Thank one, you. two, three. Alleluia. alleluia. All right, I heard that. That's good. You guys are good. Not me. That's so silly. I believe that I, I have no announcements for the life of the church, which is lovely because we've made them all this week. We've been journeying together. So here we all are at the culmination of our Easter celebration as a faith community. Therefore, I'm going to turn this into a moment for centering, arriving, and becoming calm. So if you've had a busy morning or a busy week, we invite you to listen to the music of Dominique Dodge and simply close your eyes, plant your feet on the floor, Open your hands to give and receive, and let us share in the beauty of Dominique's. That's true. Hmm? He's a harpist. Hmm. Uh, please mute yourself in fear and zone. Now.
Dominique Dodge helped us last year, and we are revisiting the music that she shared with us a year ago at the beginning of the experience of gathering together to worship during a time of COVID. Alan, thank you again. Alan wears many hats here, too. He's also like doing audio visual for those that are out in Zoom. You can't see him, but everybody in the sanctuary watches him go back and forth as he's working on the technology trying to get the sound right so the folks here can hear all of you. We're now going to turn to our call to worship. So in your bulletin, if you're here in the sanctuary or looking on your screen, if you're in Zoom, you will see the words to this call to worship. You read the part of the people, I'll read the part of the leader. It is for us that paradise is opened The river flows. A kingdom takes root. And death is overcome. We're now going to share a hymn together. Um, I might pick on Bob Carper again because he's done it before. Bob, do you mind unmuting and just being our song leader out in Zoom at least? We're going to sing Christ the Lord is Risen Today. There are three verses. For the people in the sanctuary, this is more of a listening exercise. You can hum along, but until we start to have permission to sing together in closed spaces, we're going to be a little cautious still here. So hum as much as you want and listen to the voices of one person. Everybody else will be muted. Let us share together Christ the Lord is risen today. Alan will be playing and Bob will be singing along. Christ the Lord is Round of applause to everybody that's giving us a whirl out in Zoom, especially Bob being put on the spot and being a song leader. He did it the other night for us, and it worked reasonably well. Yeah, that song was a little high. <laughs> well, <laughs> hybrid remains an exciting experience for all of us. <laughs> Our faith community has a tradition of inviting the prayers of our community both here in the sanctuary and in Zoom. First, those that you may have that you carry as a form of concern or worry. And then we will move to prayers of celebration. This morning, I want to continue to lift up Scamp Campbell, who has some ongoing diagnostics to do in her journey following the surgery that she's already had, which was successful, but there's additional things to look at and more questions to answer. Pray also for others who are having diagnostics this week. 
that they will find answers and next steps for the questions that are coming to them. We're going to ask people in the sanctuary first if you have any concerns, and then we'll move to Zoom. Kevin has a concern. Please. Okay, Kevin asks for various ministers in the valley that have been supportive to him, people within our own community, first responder, and he asks for prayers for his own well-being as he's making some transitions himself. Prayers here and concern, please go ahead. All right. So we feel what they're saying. For, for your daughter. Prayers for your daughter. And Sue. Prayers for Barbie, okay. Sasha. Sasha as well. For two of the women in our community who are having different kinds of challenges. Any other prayers of concern? Lori. Okay. Lori's got a happy prayer, and we're going to move to happy in just a moment, so hers will be the first happy. <laughs> She's so vibrating with happiness, she wants to share it now. In Zoom, are there any prayers of concern that you want us to lift up out loud together this morning? If you do, please unmute and go ahead and share them. I'm doing my best to scan, but it's always helpful if you... Anjali? Yes, for my daughter and her family... My daughter-in-law is being deployed for a year to Kosovo on May 5th. So my daughter and my 18-month-old grandson will be without her for a year, and all of us will. So for her safety and... So for your daughter's family, for her partner, her wife... Her wife, yeah. Her yep. wife who is headed to Kosovo, and for their infant child who will be missing her mother... Yes. During that time and for her safety and well-being, we will ask that God will be guardian, guide, and shield for her and for all of them. Thank you. Other My daughter who's seriously ill and for a speedy recovery. John, thank you for that prayer. Um, do you want to say a first name? Jean. Jean. Ongoing prayers for Jean for her healing, for the caregiver's insight into what's happening for her and for her family as well. Prayers of concern in Zoom. Part of our tradition, and everybody here in the sanctuary can actually do this together. So we're starting to embody our body prayer now because we are gathered as the body of Christ. And we are praying over the body of Christ. And today that body is a risen body. That body has been changed and transformed. It has experienced death, torture, suffering, and it has returned in a renewed fashion, shape, way of coming to us and being with us. But we live in our mortal bodies. And we, even as a community, the body of Christ, no pain, no suffering, no hurt, and the need for healing. And so we will, as we do every week, pray this body prayer because we have so many people that need our prayers for specific parts of their body that it has become a powerful way to channel our energy and our thoughts towards those that need them. And so I'm going to ask Kala and Evie, if they would, to help lead in Zoom the body prayer. You can stand up and the Varans too, if you would, please. I would like all of our young people, if you can. So if you see either Kate, Calla, and Evie, and Nelda and Gray, or the Varans, you, they will put their hands in all the places that we're going to pray. But here in the sanctuary and, and wherever you are at home, you can either follow with us or place your hands in the place that you know needs the most healing in your own life or in the life of someone you love and hold dear. We begin at the top of our head and we place our hands in blessing and prayer here on our skull. And we think that within the skull, there is a brain 
and that brain may have changes in cognition. We have people in our community that have epilepsy, Alzheimer's, dementia of other forms, mental health conditions, different kinds of challenges that require healing in the brain, balance in the brain. And then we move our hands to our ears and we think about those who are having problems of all kinds with hearing, deafness, loss of the ability to connect with others through their ears. We bless our jaws. We bless our mouth and the teeth and the tongue within the mouth. We put our hands on our nose. We have people with issues happening in the nasal cavity, tumors, all kinds of things happening all over the body. We place our hands on the back of our neck and we think about our spine and the way the nerves are carried by the bones of the spine down into the rest of the body. The spinal cord connects the brain to the rest of us. And some of us are living with severed spinal columns and other back problems. And so we think about the back and the spine. We place our hands on our shoulders. And as we do, we think about the joints of the body. We think about the shoulders, the hips, the knees, the wrists and the ankles. And then we pray with our hands across our chests and we think about our heart. We think about our lungs. We think about our GI tract, our esophageal tract that runs down to our stomach and further to our colon. And we put our hands lower on our bellies and we think about our liver, spleen, liver, spleen kidney, reproductive organs, pancreas, we think about the skin that holds us and connects us. We think about our lymph nodes. We think about our blood. Imagine that all these parts of the body have been lived in by Christ too. And Christ has felt pain in those parts of the body. When we pray the parts of the body, we pray for each other. And we try to imagine and understand that God has lived here with us. And God is with us still in this body. And not only are we this body in our own persons, but together we are indeed the body of Christ that has been broken. And we have remembered the stories this week of its brokenness and its suffering. And now, now we pray for all those who need healing in the different parts of their body, dignity in the journeys that people are taking towards death itself, towards a sense that love is with us all and in our homecoming. And for those that are helping lead our body prayer, if you want to do one big spin, we're going to do a blessing on the body. The kids in the, are going to do a spin for us. I'm going to do a spin here too for you guys. We're thinking about the whole body and the body of each other. We pray with concern and we pray with hope for this body gathered here today. And we thank those that have led us in this prayer, this part of the prayer. And now we're going to start with celebrations, and we're going to begin with Lori's that was vibrating so much because she's so happy that she can be here in her church with other people. And we're happy that you're out there, too. So happiness in the sanctuary first. Kevin? Kevin is grateful for the churches of the valley and the ministers in this valley and the good people he meets along the way in his journey. Alan has a gratitude or prayer. Collaboration with musicians in the valley, singers, instrumentalists. For, for the art that has come out in this time and the sharing that has happened in this valley. Prayer of celebration, yeah. Oh. We're, uh, we have somebody celebrating her 62nd birthday. She's here in the sanctuary. We're notoriously off-key when we sing happy birthday, but it's a good day for happy birthday. 
and she's grateful for her friends who've been making it a special weekend for her. We're gonna go through all the prayers of celebration and then we'll sing happy birthday. So any other happiness or gratitude here in the sanctuary? Any, go, go for it. Doubling up on the happiness of sitting in a church and being here. I see triple and quadruple on that, I think. <laughs> and, fifth, and fifths. I'm going to run out of my, my Roman letters here. Um, did you guys have other happiness, or are you just confirming that one? All right, all right. In Zoom, anybody that's happy out there or grateful for anything that you want to? Oh, and it, uh, it's another, my, our, my brother-in-law's birthday is today, actually, Jeff. So we're going to sing happy birthday to a few people today. Hmm. And Anjali's got a happy. I see. Yes. My 85 year old parents are traveling today with my brother to come here for Easter. So I'm very excited. Yeah. Family coming for Easter. I saw Bob and Kit. Okay. Yes. I have great happiness for my nephew who has been recovering over the last year from a severe stroke. And one of his goals was to walk a 5k and he, <clears throat> excuse me, he accomplished that last week. So oh. kudos to him for a job well done. Wow. And also, we're, we're happy that we're able to be in Alabama and still talk to you folks. Oh, yeah, we have people zoomed in from different parts of the country, just so you all know. We're, we're a national gathering this morning, possibly international, you never know. Um, so, but what? specifically for your nephew and, and that move from a stroke oh. to 5K, Arden and Ray look like they have some happiness. Yeah, I just want to say how grateful I am for the day center, for the kindness and the sweetness of the people who uh, care for the people who are there and um, even sent a, somebody there baked a tiny little um, bunny tiny, oh. just for each person and it's sent it home with jelly beans around it and a squishy little um, marshmallow jobby. Anyway, they're just, they're, <laughs> I'm so happy to have them in our neighborhood, more or less, Center for, Conway. So gratitude for the care of the daycare center here in the Valley who helps with a specific and very special population that's dear to us and for bunnies that were baked and sent home with folks yeah. this week. And other happinesses, I wanna make sure I didn't miss anybody in Zoom. Gail, we can't hear you. You're muted. label for that one but somebody still okay so now. for everybody that's helping out there please don't mute the church sound identity because then we then we get lost all right so we're going to pray together we've said our concerns and celebrations so let us gather in prayer this is the day for alleluia it is the day for grace beyond measure Laughter for the things that are going wrong and joy for the things that are going right. And simply the pleasure of being together. Oh God, thank you for the sunrise today and those who gathered for the sunrise. Thank you for those that gather this morning here in this church. Be with those that we have raised up in prayer, either in concern or celebration. Make your love known in a healing way in a holistic way to renit and renew relationships and bodies where it is possible, to give comfort and dignity where it is needed, to give joy, love, peace, justice in all the places of the world that we think of. 
And we think especially of Zimbabwe, our partner church, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare. We think of the villages in Honduras that we partner with. We think about the places where our children have already moved to serve or will soon be deployed. We think about all the members of our family and our beloved friends who are somewhere else in this world. May you be with their bodies too, their families, their communities, that you knit us all together. We give thanks for this day because this day has made us who we are. This day is the true meaning of the story of what it means to follow you, to follow your way, to be a Christian in this world, to be a follower of the way. We turn now to the words that you first taught us and we say together out loud, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This morning, our reading comes from John 20, verses 1 through 18. We will put the text up on the screen for those of you who are watching your screens in order to follow along. But if you're here in the sanctuary, you can find the text on the back of your bulletins. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in, and he saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place all by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary... Mary stood weeping, weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the foot. They said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabbi Noai which means teacher. Jesus said to her, do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. So ends the reading. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth 
And the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Today's story ends in a garden. And those who were at the sunrise service know what I'm going to share with you this morning. And that is that we turn today from the cross to the tree of life. The tree of life is a symbol for the rebirth and the renewal of all people. And it is one of the symbols that was used to describe the journey of Christ and connect it to more ancient stories. It is a cultural story based on scripture that the wood of the cross can be traced all the way back to the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. That that tree later became the tree that was the wood of the staff of Moses. That that staff was handed down and became the staff carried by Joseph, the father of Jesus, but that it was also the stump from which the shoot grew in the lineage of Jesse, the lineage of David, those who were the ancestors of Christ. And that somewhere along the line, this living tree that had died and been carved off and had become a powerful symbol throughout the Jewish tradition, and then again in the Christian tradition, nevertheless, was no longer living wood. And that somewhere along the line, some piece of that wood became the cross. And here in the sanctuary, beneath these black drapes, we have had a bare cross for the last few weeks, large enough perhaps at least to begin to imagine what it was like to carry the instrument of your own death across your shoulders and make the journey from the court and the jail out to the place where you would be executed, laboring under the burden of death itself. The tree of life was transformed into an instrument of execution. But we know that the story doesn't end there. The story begins in the Garden of Eden. And it is renewed here in this garden where Mary meets the risen Christ, whom she doesn't recognize at first, but how appropriate that he finds her in a garden because our tradition tells us that the promise of paradise, the promise of a kingdom renewed, is the tree of life growing with 12 kinds of fruit by the river of life itself, in a place where all will be welcome and all will be peace and all will know God's self and find community and communion together. Death is not the end for even the wood that was used on the cross because the cross is transformed again into that tree of life. The cross is empty, but the tree is living. It walks first in a garden among the early followers and that love walks among us even now. That love rises up and meets us where we are on our journey and helps carry our burdens. Our burdens may not be taken away, but they are made lighter and we are not alone. We are accompanied by love that knows everything that we could possibly endure, has faced every dark night, every difficult experience that we can imagine. Love has been there. Love has known it first ahead of all of us and walks with us through everything and meets us here in a garden, brings us together after a year of separation and isolation and longing to be made whole and reconnected, 
by bringing us together in this room, in Zoom, across time and distance itself has formed a new community that is bigger and stronger than the one we began this journey with. We are more because we have found each other, and love has found us and changed us. As death transformed Christ, as death created the story because it wasn't the end and resurrection began the tale that created the movement that became our community. We have been changed by the experiences of this year, but we are not less for it, we are more. And today we are Easter people, we are risen people, we have a new chance, another chance, and we are renewed by the one who sees us and loves us just as we are and believes in all that we can yet become. This is the promise of Easter that the tree of death has been transformed into a tree of life. Today, we will be adding our life to this tree, transforming it even more than it has been transformed. But first, we will hear a song from our choir. We will share a common meal. And for those lucky enough to be in the sanctuary or those that were at the sunrise service this morning, you will taste the tree of life itself today. And if you're at home, I remind you that we will be having communion and you are welcome to get whatever element you want, but maple syrup or honey would be great because it might fit into the meaning of this morning if you've got it, but anything will do. Whatever you have that you can use for communion. And I'm gonna just double check is Billy here? Billy, you are here. Billy, would you like to share with everybody the song and your story about the song that we're seeing this morning, hearing this morning? Yeah, definitely. Uh, morning, everyone. Uh, happy Easter. Um, so the song that the choir is going to be doing today is a song called I Will Rise. Um, actually, after doing some research on the song, um, I just found out that this song is actually a pop, a Christian pop rock song. Um, so we have an arrangement by uh, Mary McDonald. And um, the nice thing about this arrangement that I um, like to highlight is that this was a community effort. So we had our community choir as the main feature of the um, song, of course. But then we actually increased or we actually added um, other instruments to the um, ensemble. So we had saxophone, we have trumpet, we have violin and viola, and we also have piano playing in this performance. So the song again is called I Will Rise. Please feel free to take a listen um, to the lyrics and listen to how or reflect on how it relates to the Easter story. All right, enjoy. There's a place I've come to know, though my heart and flesh may fail. There's an anchor for my soul, I can say it is well. Jesus has Thanks. 
rehearsing and performing together and they've been growing. We have members of the choir here today, um, but we've been doing it all virtually. And so that music continues and the people that are part of the choir are from all over the country as well. So when I say that we have grown and we are more, I really mean it. We are different and it's wonderful. We remind all of you that we have been one of many churches in this valley and in this world who have been active throughout this time, and that your support, your offerings make a difference to us. And so there are baskets in the narthex when you're leaving, please feel free to um, drop something in there. Or if you're in Zoom, you can share by going to jxncc.org and making a donation that way and or mailing in an envelope, however you want to help us. But the things that we do together come from your support in all the different ways that you help us. But one of those is your giving, your donations. And so we thank you for your ongoing commitment to this church. So sometimes communion Sunday lines up with Easter. And once I was even asked, is it appropriate to do communion on Easter Sunday? And we reminded the person that asked us that most of the post-resurrection stories that we hear are communion stories. That in every other one, Christ sat down with somebody and ate a meal with them. The first of them was on the road to Emmaus. So today when we gather and we celebrate from the fruit of the vine and the bread that is grown from the earth that is God's creation, we are celebrating the renewal of life. But as I said, today the elements of communion here in the church are special. 
we passed out little tiny, our, our, our little regular ones, but if anybody wants it, we actually have sap water. So it's literally, the, it's been boiled, but it's the water from a maple tree that would be turned into syrup if it were boiled down. This is not particularly dense sap, so it's about 2%, so it's very faintly sweet. The people at the 8 a.m. partook of this, and the folks here are welcome to do so if you wish to as well. Um, at home, I'm sorry, you're going to have to imagine sap. If you put a little bit of sugar in your water, you might be able to taste because it's just faintly sweet. Or, hey, you know, pull out your maple syrup, stick your finger in it, and you know what it's really like when you get the final product. But it's a, it's a way of celebrating the rising of life. It's an amazing symbol of the tree of life that cold nights and slightly warmer days bring this change in the trees themselves. And that for so long, humans have known this. The Native Americans called it sweet water and collected it. And it reminds us of the returning of life in our world. And today, we share it as a celebration of the tree of life. And so let us begin our morning and our communion together by saying a common confession. I ask all of you to pray together. Feel free to unmute. It would be nice to hear all of your voices this morning, at least for the confession. And here, please pray out loud. Loving God. Amen. We confess we that at times, times we do not share the joy, joy of the resurrection. We are caught in the worries of the world. We confess that we do not always live in the spirit of the world, but remain in discontent. Forgive us for not sharing in the good news. Forgive us when we find it all comfortable to worry and play, to risk the joy and encouragement of the life and growth. We hope and reconciliation, restoration, and peace. In the name of the risen Christ, we pray. Amen. And friends, the promise of Easter, the promise of the love that finds us where we are and comes back from the dead is this. Christ is risen. The stone is rolled away and the tomb is empty. Mary calls out, I have seen the Lord. We have seen Christ too in every helping hand this year, in every heartfelt gift, in every choice to restore life in this world. We are called to a new life a life of forgiveness and reconciliation. You are forgiven. Accept now your forgiveness and know that God loves you and desires great joy for your life. Walk forward in this journey that we have begun together, knowing that your brothers and sisters are with you and that all of us are held and bound together by love. Amen. We bless the elements of communion. We call down your blessing and ask that love shall be here in this room, in our gathering across Zoom, throughout the nation, in all the places where you find your people choosing to break bread together, choosing to lift a cup together. Every time people gather with love and affection, it is a sharing of holiness. It is a sacrament. We ask that you will be present with us in the sacrament, the joyful sacrament of gathering this morning for the first time in over a year to share in communion together. You'll find the Sursum Corda and Sanctus in your bulletin if you are here in the sanctuary or you'll find it on your screen. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. It is very meet, right, and our bound in duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto you, everlasting God. 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. We can hum it here together at least. There's always a time delay for the sound. For those that are gathered in your living rooms, we will now be sharing first the bread and the cup. If you're here, you can eat the bread, the, the little wafer that's in your communion set, or you can have a piece of bread bread if you want bread bread. If anybody wants bread bread, raise your hand. And out there, I hope you have something um, to eat a cracker, a cereal, a loaf of bread, anything that you might have. And we're going to bless the element first, and then we'll ask you to partake of it. We're sharing it here in the sanctuary right now. So friends, today we remember the road to Emmaus. And we remember that the followers of Christ were walking, traveling away from Jerusalem, troubled in heart. They believed that the one that they had followed was dead. They were talking very animatedly about the turmoil, the political upheaval, the strife that had gone on in their city. They were Jews who had gone to celebrate an important festival in their ritual life. And they believed that their loved one had been executed in that time. And then a stranger met them on the road and started walking with them. And they're like, friend, haven't you heard what's been going on? And they traveled together and they invited him into their home. And they say that sometimes when you enter trained strangers, you may be sitting down with angels or even God's self. Thank you, Wendy. They sat down with a stranger, and he took the bread, and he blessed it before them. And when he broke the bread open, their eyes were opened, their hearts were opened, and their lives were changed. And it became one of the stories that we still tell, that God came back with love to meet us on our journey, to walk with us, and to sit down and share bread with us. We break the bread, and when we take of the bread, we remember holy love and how it meets us and changes us forever. Take and eat, and do so in celebration of the Alleluia of Easter. If you're in Zoom, we're passing out sap water. It's very clear. It doesn't look like syrup at all. It's just very clear. Um, a few people are going to try it. But we recall in this story that it was the sharing of the cup and the blessing of the bread that broke open a life, a story, and an experience that changed everyone. And so today, when you share the cup, a cup that on the Last Supper, Christ poured himself for each person, 
and in doing so poured out his own life. In doing so, he poured out his own life. And so, whether, have you, whether you've chosen the fruit of the vine, or whether you have chosen the sap that rises as new life in the maple tree, know that the new life is a promise that has poured out for you of spring, of renewal, of transformation. And when you drink, drink with hope, Drink with joy, drink with gratitude and remembrance. Drink. We share now the thanksgiving for these offerings of bread and cup that were given to us and shared among us. You can find that statement of thanksgiving in your bulletin or you can find it up on your screen. We are not alone. God made us. Can trouble, pain, or persecution can anything separate us from the love of Christ? That was me, sorry. No. In all these things, we win an overwhelming victory through the one whose love for us today on Easter has been proven. Neither death nor life, neither messenger of heaven nor ruler on earth, neither what happens today nor what may happen tomorrow, Neither power from on high, nor power from below, nor anything else has power to separate us from the love of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now, friends, we have been journeying with the cross for several weeks. There are crosses throughout our church that tell the story of the walk that Christ took towards death and beyond death. And this morning, we celebrate that cross becoming the tree of life. And so today, we take a symbol that has been a symbol of death, and we change it into a symbol of new life. We will do this in two ways. If you are here, we invite you to come up and put a butterfly on the cross. If you're at home, we're going to share with you a video of how we've already begun to butterfly the cross. However, there are lots of butterflies here, and this cross will be outside for the, all of today, and then it will be inside at least for another week. So you can come down at any point. If you're not close by, you can come put a butterfly on the cross. And if you're in California or Ohio or Florida, we're sending you butterflies. We're doing our best to be as inclusive as we can. <laughs> Some parts of this you kind of have to do the virtual way. But there are butterflies here in Jackson for everybody that wants to partake. And there are butterflies in this video for all of us. So we're going to run the video while those of us here are taking the black cloth off and transforming this even more. But let's hold the video until we take off the black cloth. And David, can I get you to help me remove the cloth? Thank you. This is the transformation of an instrument of torture into a tree of life. In some traditions, people use flowers. <laughs> we didn't practice this, can you tell? but we're doing pretty well. In past years, we have used our flowers to change this cross. Last year, we adopted butterflies, and the deacons asked that we should do butterflies again. We started it for you so that there would be something to share with our community. Can you all see that? 
butterfly cross. All right. We're going to show you a video of how we did this. I'm going to invite you to come up in little groups. There are butterflies right here, so you can add butterflies to the cross and think about what you're grateful for and celebrating today as you do suit if you choose to come up. And there'll be music playing with the video, so go ahead, um, go ahead and start the video, Chris, if you want. My husband needs to connect with me. So you're welcome. But what I want to tell you about butterflying the cross yesterday, we added our more our extra butterflies. But a family, a couple of families actually came into the church and visited, and one of them had a special needs child, and they helped us butterfly the cross. So they got an early Easter experience, and they're part of the video that we shared with you. The hands are my family and a few other people that happened upon the experience, and their hands are in there too. So even butterflying the cross in preparation for today became this very tender and healing moment um, for all of us that were here. Happy Easter. Alleluia. Alleluia. We have the tradition of a benediction that we all love. And if you're at home, you get to sing it. If you're here, you get to hum it or listen to it. And 
Beyond this, go transformed, go in peace. The cross and the butterflies will be here if you want to come add more prayers, more hope to the cross at any point. And the symbols of the crosses will remain, but we're going to change out the journey that you'll be taking with them after today. So be changed. Let love into your heart and into your life and be transformed by this experience. May the 